ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? The show starts in three, two, one, go. Good morning, Kane Sport. It's September 13th, 2021. I'm Gary Furman, the publisher of Kanesport.com, joined once again by our managing editor, Matt Shodell, as we discuss the news of the day. And uh, Matt, we've got to start with the news of Saturday night, without question, going into Sunday and now Monday. It, it's, it's at the tip of everybody's tongues. Everybody wants to talk about what is wrong with the Miami Hurricanes and why they've come out of the gate so slow this season, why the offense that was supposed to be so good is struggling the way that it is, uh, and what can they do about it in time for Saturday's game against Michigan State. So uh, let's start with the offense. Uh, you know, we didn't like what we saw against Alabama, no question. They never really got started in that game. But you're thinking Appalachian State, not a great defensive team, that they could come out in the home opener and start to establish themselves offensively. But I never felt they did. I mean, the offense turned into De'Ara King running around like a chicken with his head cut off most of the time. It worked. I mean, they got out of dodge with the victory. But that's not going to be able to get it done as the season goes forward. Yeah, I mean, it was very strange to me that Miami's receivers with – you know, so much speed, weren't able to make a lot of plays down the field. Like, I think they had two plays at 30 or more yards. Um, I think one was maybe 33, one was maybe 36. But when you have that kind of an advantage, pretty much across the board athletically, speed-wise for the most part, um, yeah, it didn't really make sense to me. I mean, I was, I was sitting next to you in the press box, and I kept saying to you, like, I don't understand. <laughs> you know, Miami out-talents App State at every position, and uh, – it just was a close game. They were losing at halftime. Fans were booing. It was it was an ugly an ugly scene. It almost seemed like when they won, the fans weren't even excited. Like it just it didn't feel good, you know. As a as a guy covering Miami for a long time, um, you know, you want to see fans obviously be happy. It's the team we cover, and you want to see the team do well. It's the players we cover, and it's uh, you know it's just not a good situation. They have to they have to really start to put things together and look good. I, I think I said to you before the game. I said, look, I mean, it doesn't matter if they win by six points or, or 20 points as long as they look good. You know, App State could look great and just play a good game, but it was more about Miami needs to play well, and they didn't uh, on either side of the ball to me. And uh, I also don't like, you know, when Miami coaches always put such a great face on how they played. It was just this little thing. We fix this little, you know, just score more. Well, hello. <laughs> Isn't that pretty obvious, <laughs> like, for any team? So that was Manny Diaz's thing. You know, we have to score more. Okay, I could have told you that before the game they need to score more. You know, I, I've heard people try to slough it off to the team being flat. You know, it was App State. They weren't up. They had a letdown after getting up so high for Alabama. That's that's nonsense. I mean, they were ready to play. They they came out, looked, they looked like they were under the play. There was enthusiasm on the sideline. There was enthusiasm on the field. Um, for whatever reason, Rhett Lashley is having a hard time getting out of the gate this season uh i can't explain it i I mean the numbers that he put up at smu before he came to miami were like out of the out of orbit like they were unbelievable uh the offense i thought last year was you know relatively good in, in 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 most games and uh they supposedly have all these weapons you know rambo looks very good Keyshawn smith is looking to me like he's, you know, starting to blossom and is showing a lot of potential. Uh, you've got Harley and Restrepo in the slot who are decent slot receivers. Uh, I think the load at running back might be a, getting a little too much for Cam Harris. Uh, he had 19 carries last night. Uh, you know, I don't know. You know, they're, they're struggling a little bit there. Don Chaney's hurt. It looks like it's not looking good for him. Uh you know, possibly for the rest of the season. Uh, Jalen Knighton still has two more weeks of suspension left. So Don Chaney is really the show at running back. But uh, I don't know. He didn't look so sharp to me last night. And part of it might have been the offensive line struggling. You know, they've had to replace Scaife with uh, Justice. And 
just they just seem out of rhythm like there there just doesn't seem to be any rhythm to what they're doing there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to what they're doing uh they don't look like they're being very creative offensively uh it it, it just i don't even know what to say about it. it it's 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 like stunning it really is so I don't know. It, it has to get obviously get better. I mean, the degree of difficulty is going to go up. Uh, Virginia looked very good yesterday. That's that's the thing that gets me. Like there are teams that Miami's going to be playing. Michigan State's been looking very good. Virginia came out of the gates good. Uh, you know, it, it's going to get tougher. At least it seems like it's going to. They're not going to be able to get away with performances like yesterday. Yeah, I, you, 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 yeah. You met Cam Harris at the show, but yeah, I mean, I, I actually like that Cam Harris got that many carries because he looked a lot better in the second half than the first, ran with more of a purpose. Uh, I mean, he did have over 90 yards. You know, he had like barely anything in the first half, maybe, I can't remember exactly, 30-something yards. Um, but he's, you know, he's like a, a, you know, he's got some power to him, and those power backs tend to just sort of get a little a little stronger as the game goes on. They get in the flow. The defense gets a little tired. They sort of see the holes a little better. So, I've got no problem with him getting 20, 25 carries, you know, with Cheney out at all and, and with Knight not available. And, um, but yeah, the, you know, to the bigger picture, um, Miami's playing some teams that have looked good, you know, FSU, not so much, but <laughs> other teams, um, it's, it's going to be interesting because, you know, it, like for instance, they're playing Michigan state this weekend. And again, it's, it's almost like app state all over again. It's like, we really don't know who Miami is. There's no identity on offense for Miami yet. There's no identity on defense for Miami yet. I was thinking they would at least figure out one or the other in this game. And, you know, Manny Diaz keeps talking about how the run defense has been so good in both these games. Like, I don't know. I have eyes. You know, I don't think that giving up, you know, four yards of carry, three and a half yards of carry is, is so great for Miami defense. It's, you know, that when it's really, really good is allowing teams to under three yards of carry and forcing teams to throw. So, um, you know, he was very proud that his team, you know, forced App State to run different types of run plays than they run before, you know. So, I, I look, I, I, I don't really, I don't like some of the rhetoric coming out of Coral Gables. I just wish that they would say there's a problem and we're going to fix it instead of it's just this little thing and we're doing great against the run and I'm, the defense did fine. Like, no, you know. If, if they don't recognize some of the issues they're having and recognize they shouldn't be playing a two-point game against App State, and basically Manny is saying there's a couple of plays that if they'd gone differently, we, you know, we wouldn't have blow out. Well, guess what? The App State quarterback had a guy wide open for a game of at least 20 off his own goal line and totally misfired to him. And the next play through the interception that set up Miami's first touchdown – the App State quarterback missed a completely wide open receiver in the end zone, in the middle of the end zone from 10 yards away, um, threw it way over his head, um, and they didn't get a touchdown that drive. So, I mean, he can say that about his team, but App State had so many opportunities also. I mean, Miami, just it, it, it's just like they should be blowing out an App State. They just should. Like, that's the level of play I expect from Miami. I think fans should expect. I think that's why there's a lot of frustration, and there's even more frustration, you know, when like on the fans on Kane Sport message boards, don't want to hear what people are saying on the team after the game because it's just this rhetoric of we're just this close, you know. Instead of saying, "Listen, we've got a problem and we're going to work hard to fix it," and you know, it's 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 still a growing thing. You know, we got a couple more recruiting classes to get where we want to be. Like, just tell it like it is because I think Miami fans appreciate that. Um, so you know, that's my big thing: is just be honest, be truthful. You know, to put a positive spin on a game like that just made it even more hard to swallow a uh, two-point win against App State. You know, you look at the stat sheet, and it's it's weird. I, I you know, you're watching that game, and you didn't get the feeling that the defense was having a great day. Uh, you know, App State was able to do an awful lot during the course of the game, but they only ended up with 325 yards of offense, which really is not terrible. Uh, conversely, Miami's offense ended up with 375. But you know, to me, the you know, they got a hundred of them or 79 net added the Eric King running the ball. Um, you know, the Eric King running 19 times to me is way too much. Uh, you know, I don't understand uh, who thought it was a great idea for him to take that type of pounding in the game last night to, you know, to run that many times. Uh, uh, you know, I, I sensed he was doing a little bit of it on his own, like, you know, the, the hell with this. I'm taking this game in my hands. 
Uh, I'm the leader. I'm going to make sure we don't lose. And and he was just tucking it and going sometimes. But the quarterback, to me, running 19 times is not conducive to good offense and good rhythm offense and everybody being involved. And um, I thought the passing game really suffered. The, st- the stats aren't horrible because you had a, a, a 36-yard diving catch by Keyshawn Smith. And you had that long 33-yard pass up the right sideline to Charleston Rambo. So that made the 200 yards passing look respectable. But play to play last night, the passing game was off. They they had a real hard time getting it going. Um, you know, Restrepo had two catches, 18 yards. Um, Harley had five catches, 27 yards. You know, that's not great. Will Mallory, three catches, 16 yards. They're having a hard time getting him going. They tried early in the game to hit him down the middle with a pass. He he came open, but the, the ball was overthrown. Then they never went back to anything like that again. Uh, so, you know, Lashley is going to have to figure out why they're not getting into a rhythm and, and, and make some adjustments. And it, it looked to me, Matt, like the play sheet was very vanilla last night. And uh, we heard a lot of conversation the week before about – a lot of mental errors and, and guys maybe struggling to handle the number of plays that they had in the game plan for Alabama. So they were having a lot of mistakes along the way. And it looked like they tried to simplify it last night, but by simplifying it, I think they made it too vanilla and they're going to have to find a happy medium because that is not a winning offense that they're, that they're running right now. And this team is going to need to rely on its offense when the competition gets tougher. Yeah, I mean, I agree 100%. If, if um, you know, it's almost like watching Alabama, I think I felt like they were holding stuff back. You know, they were just running their basic plays. And I felt the same way against App State. Like, there was nothing that they really did differently. They said, we're going to do what we do all the time, and we're going to do the same things, and we expect to win that way. But if they could recognize that, you know, maybe they're not as good as they think they are, which I, I think is fairly obvious to most people right now, um, you know, like Rhett Lashley said, he tried to scheme a little bit for Alabama and, you know, maybe that didn't work or backfire or whatever some people think, but I think you have to do that for some teams. Like you just have to find something particular to that team from three years ago or 10 years ago against that coordinator that you saw work, whatever, with whatever team it was against at that time, you know, that's where people find these things. And then you try it, you know, and you practice it and you practice it and you rep it and rep it and you try it in the games. And if you, if you find something that works, you keep going back to it at key moments. Like that's, how teams upset other teams a lot of times. And, um, you know, I think Miami needs to do a little bit more of that. All right. So um, we've got some, a lot of stories from the game. If you haven't read them yet, I'm sure by now you have, um, you know, a lot of coverage from the Saturday night's game. Uh, we also have uh, our by the numbers feature, which breaks down every player. It gives you the snap counts, gives you their pro football focus grade for that game. Um, if I think you'll find that interesting if you want to see who played well who didn't it's not an exact science but it's pretty good uh they evaluate every single player in every single play that he's on the field and they have a a a pretty reliable grading system so uh i think you'll like to buy the numbers Uh, we also have our fifth quarter q a uh spent all day yesterday last night this morning answering questions of the fans that came from the game there were a lot of them as usual um people just are very dismayed and 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 they're looking for reasons they're looking for answers as to why the hurricanes are looking the way they have early this season a year that was set up that this was going to be a year miami wins the coastal and gets to charlotte right now they're not looking like a team that can win the coastal and get to charlotte so uh they still have the capability to morph into that they still have a couple more weeks to get it right and hopefully uh this week against michigan state is the week where we start to see some uh, forward progress in that regard. All right, uh, some other stories uh, on the site this morning. Uh, A story of Ohio State commit Ryan Turner, a cornerback, and how Miami is working really hard to try try to sway him. Uh, They were able to get him to come out to Hard Rock Stadium on Saturday. I'm not sure, Matt, if that was a positive or a negative, but – it is nice to see that they're not giving up on these local guys. They're going to recruit them to the finish line. And like this kid going to Ohio State, it makes it pretty clear. He's pretty locked in with Ohio State. But that's not keeping DVD from chasing after him. And I think that's a good thing. Your thoughts? 
you know, sort of, <clears throat> this is what I've been talking about for a long time now. Like, this is what you have to do. This is called recruiting. I mean, just because a kid says he's not coming, if he's local, you have a ton of his teammates in your team, and you think he's an outstanding prospect, you don't give up. You don't know what's going to happen at Ohio State. You know, a few months from now, maybe the the you know the the cornerback coach, DB coach, will will move on to a different level or a different program, and you know this kid might have. Yeah, some maybe they take three other cornerback commits or whatever. Yeah, stuff happens yeah. all the time. But when the kid tells you I'm not coming, and you say okay, and you move on to your next guy, and you stop talking to that guy, you have no chance. So kudos to DVD. I wish that every position coach of mine did the same thing. Like you identify your top guys, they commit somewhere else. You don't say, oh, you know, screw this guy. He doesn't really want to be a hurricane. You know, it's recruiting. You stay on them. You keep that relationship going. Whether it's just one text a week, a call a week, it's not like you know you don't have to do it. You don't have to kill yourself over it. But it lets the kid know you care about the kid and you want the best for him. Listen, wherever you go is great. I just want to make sure everything's going well with you. Whatever you know, how are your grades? How's the family? And then you never know. Crazier things have happened. Okay, we also have a story this morning about four-star cornerback Cormani McLean uh, from Lake Gibson, who made a three-hour drive down for the Appalachian State game. So that's that's interesting. I mean, it, if he's driving down three hours for that game, it shows he's interested. Uh, I'm not sure what he saw is help, is going to help in that regard. But, um, you know, we give you an update on him and his impressions of the game. And uh, we also tell you the story of Palmetto wide receiver Mike Jackson, who wasn't hearing from Miami for a while. Now he's hearing from Miami again. Uh, you can read about what coaches are telling him and where he stands with the Hurricanes. So we've got that right now. And then uh, later this morning, there will be um, some extensive media availabilities. We're going to talk to Manny Diaz. Uh, we'll talk to Rhett Lashley, um, you know, a few other people, and uh, bring you those updates around midday sometime. Uh, program notes, Tuesday night, we got our uh, – Kane Sport Live show, as always, 8 o'clock Tuesday night. Wednesday night, we've got the Lamar Thomas show, 8 o'clock as well. And we just um, got a commitment from uh, two-time national championship head coach, Dennis Erickson, who's going to uh, join Lamar and myself uh, for that show on Wednesday night. Uh, we're very much looking forward to talking to Dennis, catching up, and just getting his overall impressions of what's going on in college football, what's going on at Miami, and maybe give us some insight into the Miami job from the head coach's point of view. And uh, so looking very much forward to that. We'll also have blogs this week with Mike Harley and Tyreek Stevenson, as always, uh, working on some other stuff, some other NIL projects that uh, we're expecting to uh, announce and launch this week. So a lot of things going on at canesport.com. We're sorry the team's not playing better, but we hope you're enjoying the coverage. We hope you're enjoying you're enjoying the NIL um, content that we're able to bring to you that's a little different than years past. And uh, we'll keep working together to make this fan experience as enjoyable as possible while we wait for the team to start performing at a higher level on the field. So for Matt Shodell, I'm Gary Furman. We thank you for joining us on Good Morning Kane Sport today. And we'll see you tomorrow with more news of the day. Have a great day, everybody.